today's video, we're going to be having a discussion about if Evolving Skies reprints are just around the corner. Now, of course, before we jump right into this big topic, as always, if you want to enter into our weekly giveaways, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. We've got multiple winners each and every week, and we've got multiple opportunities for you to enter by commenting and liking on any of our videos. Of course, if you want to join the community, links down in the description below for our Discord. If you want to, of course, access our new wholesale tier pricing, you can also check out our Patreon as we just now opened that up this last month. But jumping into today's topic, so if you don't already, of course, know, we have recently heard some rumors that have been circulating around about Evolving Skies reprint somewhere in Europe. So I wanted to kind of have a general conversation about that, about what we know, and then also what the expectation is on how this is going to affect things in the future within the US and of course, you know, other countries outside of Europe. So uh, first things first to have a conversation about, hey, is this a reprint? Is this not a reprint? Yes, it technically is a reprint confirmed. However, there is a caveat with that. And with that caveat, there's a lot of things to consider. So I, using some of my sources and uh, information that I have, um, was informed that there is one large main distributor that kind of supplies the majority of your uh, European Pokemon product. Uh, so their name is Asmati, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but more or less, that's kind of their whole thing is they take care of all of the restocked Pokemon product um, within Europe or within the EU. So um, when I was informed, of course, of the direct sourcing in terms of, hey, where are we getting this news from? It was straight from a sales rep from um, this big Asmati um, distributor over in Europe. So it's something that is coming from one, a reputable source. So we know that this is not just some random rumor that's been circulating around. Second off with that, however, what we have also discovered is that over in Europe, there was supposed to be a second large wave of Evolving Skies product that ended up getting canceled because of some general, you know how it is with Pokemon supply chain issues. Um, and so they ended up never getting a second wave for Evolving Skies. With this, of course, all being said, we are now getting that more or less a second wave. And how this is going to affect things or how you can interpret that is obviously up to you. Here's my kind of general thought process. I know some people are going to look at this in regards to, oh, well, it's just a wave that got delayed that was supposed to come out. It's entirely possible that could be true. Uh, a perfect example of this is we saw Evolving Skies specialty ETBs on the Pokemon Center website uh, get delayed and they finally showed up over in Europe or on the UK website. And then eventually, of course, uh, they did end up going out of stock, but it was something that was delayed for the longest time because the prints for the Pokemon Center website were a little bit different from US versus the UK. However, in this general situation, the reason why I think this is a little bit different and why I do think there's some sentiment to be had here, whether it's a bit of hoping or not, if you go back and look at how it was in the United States when Chilling Rain first came out, as I said, it was initially supposed to have two waves. Of course, with wave one came out, prices dropped like all the way down to, I think, 110 per, or 120 per booster box on TCG Player. And then the second wave was supposed to come out shortly after and ended up getting pushed back and delayed by like five months. And what happened when Chilling Rain, of course, did get its huge resupply, everything else got a reprint around the same time. Now, of course, I'm not guaranteeing that this is exactly what's going to happen, especially to, uh, with all of this being said, it is in Europe and like the example I used with the Pokemon Center website example, um, you know, there's no guarantee that, of course, correlation is the reason for future causation, but it is entirely possible that something like this could potentially happen. And so in terms of, of course, uh, getting your hopes up um, and not fully feeling as if, okay, well, this is just a wave that we we're expecting, nothing exciting to see here. This could be actually a little bit of traction within the future. Not to mention, we've already, of course, been having our conversation and, and a hypothesis in terms of reprints happening sometime going into next year. So if this is something that we're getting traction for right now, 
now, about a week before the end of December going into next year, it would totally make sense that this could actually line up with reprints coming in the US shortly after this. Once again, this is of course at this point just making speculation off of the news that we know of now and how that could of course tribute to what's going to potentially happen in the future for the United States. Now at the end of the day, I look at it as positive because if, when it comes to the Pokemon company, you know, it's not just a reprint for like Silver Tempest or one of the newer sets or just a new set coming out and we're hearing that there's going to be a large print. This is of course, as weird as it sounds to say, one of the older sets for Sword and Shield. One that of course came out a little bit over a year now so it's entirely you know possible that this could of course line up with future predictions now with this all being said regardless of whether there is a causation with this people of course are going to be asking me the question well Eli do you think this is of course going to potentially play a effect on general booster box pricing it's entirely possible but it's also really difficult to say, right? Because in my mind, if you're saying that there was a delayed wave, then it's more than likely that for a standard second wave, at least in the US, of course, this is obviously not within the US, so you have to take everything I say with a grain of salt because I'm trying to compare. Um, you're typically going to see a larger amount of products being put on the market that then in turn is going to cause prices to, of course, go down. However, when you look at the US market versus you know, the market over in Europe, general prices for product tends to be much, much higher. And so I feel as if it's entirely possible because I mean, at the end of the day, more supply is always a good thing, but I'm going to believe that it's going to lead to prices to take a dip, but not as much as people think. So if you are someone, and of course not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but if you are someone that's been heavily invested in you know, Evolving Skies booster boxes and has been following me for a while and waiting for that kind of signal on whether it's a good time to sell or not, if you're in the room for margin of profitability, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea from a speculative perspective to start selling off your supply and taking profits. Let's be real here, guys. We're almost at $300 a booster box. Now, obviously, if you've been following me for the past six months now, my prediction was after the resupply of Evolving Skies product back in August, I said that if we don't get a large wave of it, I have a big suspicion that you could see $200, which was the previous high, get smashed through and $300 end of year was kind of my prediction. Well, we are currently eight days away from end of year and the price of booster boxes is $293 on TCG Player. So I think that, you know, pretty spot on with it. However, my next, of course, prediction with that is going to be the transition of if it gets to $300, which it's basically almost there, what is the next kind of point? Is it going to stop, go sideways? Is it going to break through? I'm under the impression that this news in and of itself is going to one, play a huge psychological factor into the already consideration of my kind of idea of the round number theory, which is I tend to see psychologically speaking, when people look at, you know, $100, $200, $300, that kind of zero, zero at the end, there's something psychological when it comes to purchasing a product that makes people, you know, have less of a tendency to look at that product in the same way um, in terms of purchasing it than if they were to see $299, $199. And I mean, there's a whole psych uh, psychological, of course, you know, uh, research and studies that have been done on this many times before, but more or less, it's like a barrier, I think, from a price movement perspective that we're going to be reaching relatively soon here. And I think that, of course, this could also be another major factor that could tie into that price of 300 being a stagnation point. Now, whether, of course, it's we hit 300 bucks and then we just go sideways from here or whether it be we are attempting to hit 300 bucks and this news causes people to panic and prices of course go down regardless of that kind of situation and i could be wrong altogether it could just keep going up up and up but i'm just going to use my general of course hypothesis of human emotions and human reaction and presume that there's going to be some people that are going to take this news 
run with it and there is going to be some panic sellers now of course you know you guys are going to be getting this news relatively early since this is something that has just been discussed within the past couple of days through our live streams if you have been a part of those of course check them out we stream tuesday thursday 12 30 p.m pacific standard time um but you know ultimately like I said before, if we go and take a look at general pricing right now on TCG Player website, we haven't seen that general correction yet. So, you know, like I said before, if you are in the price point of marginal profitability, then I highly recommend that you at least liquidate some of your investment and make a return on it. You don't have to liquidate all of it. You could liquidate 25%, 50%, 100%. It's all up to you, like I said before, not a financial advisor, but it's never a bad idea to leave profits on the table. Like I discussed in one of my earlier videos about some of the biggest mistakes that I had within the market, it was always saying, oh, I'll be completely fine. The reprint's not gonna be that big. Prices aren't gonna go much. Or, oh, it's a reprint over in the UK or over in Europe. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. It won't affect us over here in the US and just keeping fully invested. You always have to, of course, have a backup plan in case you're wrong and having a little bit of money pulled off the table, knowing that even if you are right, of course, you'll still have some at least invested to keep writing out. Or if you are wrong, hey, at least I took some off the table. And of course, I secured a lot of my profit Profit. Don't get greedy and don't get, of course, tunnel vision when it comes to this decision. Um, now, like I said before, when people are going to, of course, ask me the question, how much do I think this could potentially affect the pricing? I don't think it's going to affect pricing in the short term, of course, as much as people think. Um, I think this is more of just an indicative of the future of what's going to happen in the US. Um, but pricing wise, you know, with booster boxes being almost 300 bucks and over in Europe, it's a lot more expensive of a market. I think it's entirely possible to see prices come down to, you know, 220 bucks, maybe 200 bucks is best case scenario at this point. Um, and, and although that might seem, you know, high or some people might say that seems low, um, I think it's really realistic because when you look at the market for a lot of booster box prices compared to the US, there's like a 40, $50 difference. Like there's times where booster boxes over in the US are like 110, 115 and over in Europe, they're like 155, 160. Um, and so that's where I, I personally believe that you know, obviously if it were to come to the US, I think it would be a lot bigger of a retrace, but I think it's a completely different market. So we're going to have to make this assessment and make this judgment based off the market that is of course over in Europe. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, this is of course just an opportunity for Pokemon um, you know, fans to be able to get some Evolving Skies booster boxes for cheaper. Now, as I mentioned many times before, I still think even if it does hypothetically go down to 200 bucks, I am not anywhere close to touching it because I'm waiting for that big reprint that's gonna happen in the US that's gonna more than likely lead us to break below 100 bucks once again, and then we will of course assess what a good entry point is gonna be when that does come to fruition. But that is all for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you want to enter into our weekly giveaways, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got multiple winners and opportunities for you to enter each and every week. On top of that as well, if you want to, of course, join the community, make sure to check out our Discord, or if you wanna support the channel in any way, or check out some of the new and awesome things that we've added for the overall channel, check out first and foremost, our Patreon as we just, of course, introduce our wholesale pricing tier where you get access to distributor product prices. But that is all for today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Until then, I will see you all on Wednesday as I will not be recording a video on Monday. I hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas. Peace.